I want to say good luck to the basketball team and their, the seniors. Uh, they are, they're going out in the last home game here uh, at the arena. Just appreciate all their contributions to uh, the University of Missouri. This uh, season's been exciting to watch them, and I uh, look forward to them having a great game tonight and then look forward to what they're going to do in the tournament. Um, appreciate all the fans. Uh, what a beautiful day. What a great turnout um, by the fans, the 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 the, the – People who support our university, hopefully they got a great look at what their season tickets could look like and, and uh, really appreciative of them being out here and hopefully gave them something to do today. And, and uh, hopefully we entertained all the people on the other side that were getting their vaccine shots too. So um, productive day of practice, continuing to work to get better. Uh, one day at a time, we're just trying to stack some good days together. Um, got some high red zone work today. And then at the end, just moved the ball a couple of times. Obviously the defense was way ahead of the offense today. And so uh, got to clean up a lot of turnovers, but uh, overall it's a good day. I like I like the struggle right now that we're in. So that's good. Uh, first question, Dave Matter, St. Louis Post Dispatch, go ahead. Hey Eli, I know it's it's really early and these guys are new, but what can Lovett and Cooper, what, what can they add to this offense? And, and um, them? Well, they've got great speed uh, in their They do a really good job with the ball in their hand, and both of them had flashes today of some really good things. I'm not sure that uh, if we were playing live, they would have been able to tackle Mookie on that uh, little uh, around the edge. And then we had a great reverse play in the red area. So, you know, excited to find ways to get the get them the ball, you know, in space. I think the most important thing is for them not to feel the pressure that they have to do anything um, any more than just be the best version of themselves and keep practicing every day to get better all that stuff will take care of themselves, but definitely excited about the opportunities for sure. Andrew Poffman, KMIZ. Coach, uh, especially for you, I, I'm sure you're animated at every practice, but you know, having the fans and for the players, was it, do you think it added a little bit more to, to have people watching them? Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I told them all the Ted Williams story, right, which is they asked him why he plays and doesn't take a day off because – uh, you never know if this is the first time this young man's watched him play or going to, you know, let him hit a home run. So it's it's kind of that opportunity that anytime you get a chance to perform, always perform at your best. And we always appreciate having the fans. Um, just a great opportunity for us and great opportunity for our guys to feel that performance anxiety and battle through it too. Yeah, Eli, I know there will be plenty of – you know, shuffling between now and in the season, obviously. But I notice, uh, I, I notice Case Cook is is getting a decent uh, amount of reps at center. Is that just something to to kind of be prepared for multiple situations there? It's both. Um, you know, Case and Michael Mayetti have had a ton of football. They've played a ton of football, and you don't want to over. You know, there's a certain amount of reps that a, a body can take, and so we're trying to. Um, make sure that we do a nice job of making sure Case and Mike uh, don't over over rep, I would say, is the best word, word uh, term. And then it also provides us an opportunity to give that guard position uh, great reps. So you got Luke, you got EJ, you got X, you got Mike Ruth, you got um, Richard Taylor. You, you got a lot of different guys. You got some Connor Tolleson thrown in there too. You got a lot of different guys who can rep multiple positions and it gives them an opportunity to grow and develop. You know, we kind of know what Case is going to do at that guard position. Uh, he's got four years of tape on it. Um, so, you know, giving him an opportunity to be a back uh, – to rep center just in case. Mike's a, a, a rock at that position. But, you know, give an opportunity to protect our guys too. Jack Sobel, the manager. Eli, uh, sticking with the depth chart, it looked like uh, J.C. Carlisle was uh, with the first team at, at deep safety today. Is, is that where you see him long term and how did, how did he look there today? Uh, yes, J.C. has been playing a lot of free safety. I – there is no depth chart at the end of spring. I mean, this is just an opportunity for everybody to get playing time. And really at the end of spring, it's, it's um, you know, you got four months to get ready for the real competition. You know, we don't open up with a game. We open up with fall camp and, and depth charts are really more just for organizational purposes. Uh, but he's doing a nice job at that position. And he had a pick in tempo that would have been returned to the house. He's natural with the ball in his hands. Uh, he's got that length and, and a ball awareness. So, yeah, we're very, very excited about what his potential is at that free safety position. Eric Blum, Columbia Tribune. Hey, I actually have a question about Case as well. Uh, when did you know he was going to pl plan on cutting off his hair and then donating it to Wigs for Kids? And then, in your opinion, in kind of a joking way, but kind of serious too, does he look better with or without the mullet? 
his mom alerted me and said, don't tell him that I told you because he doesn't want anybody to know, which I promptly called and said, your mom told me that you're getting your hair cut. Um, I'm just kidding uh, about calling him. But that's how I found out. Um, you know, I think it's a mullet is, is, you know, in college, it's business in the front, party in the rear, you know, and that's kind of how you live your life when you're in college. So right now, I think it would be probably best in his interest to have maybe kept the mullet. Uh, but as he's going into his internships this summer, you know, it was probably best to, to kind of eliminate that party in the rear type conversation and just get on that business front. So I think it's, you know, we got Daniel Hawthorne working his mullet right now from a deep snapper position. And he's kind of, he's, you know, going into his sophomore season. So he's kind of in that, you know, business in the front part in the rear type type guy right now. And then a quick follow up. So oh, follow up. Uh, you know, just what, it, what, it, what does it say about him that he, you know, not only just got rid of it, but gave it to an organization like Wakes for Kids? I mean, I think that tells you can, it continues to reveal who Case Cook is. I think we all know that he's got, a, he's a tremendous man of character, great work ethic, toughness, but what's, you know, it, who you are reveals itself over time, and and it's just a continuation of who he really is. Eli, I know you've gotten a lot of questions about Sean Robinson. Um, I'm, he he was sort of telling us that he needs to be a little more patient with himself during the transition process. I'm curious, just sort of what your interactions have been like with him early in spring camp, and and how he's making that adjustment so far. You know, I made a made a cut up for for the team about the way Sean practices compared to everybody else. And if our whole team would practice the way Sean Robinson's practicing right now, with urgency, intense intensity, and, and great focus on detail, um, we'll be a championship football team. Uh, but we got to continue to raise our level. But he's setting a standard for us on how to practice. Um, he he knows he's going to go out there and make mistakes, but it's about growing and learning from each one of those mistakes. He plays really fast. He plays really hard. You know, my only interaction with him today was yelling at him to stay off the quarterback. I think he's got some pent up energy against Brady Cook, and he's really going to take him out right there. But nice play, he's playing good. Um, like I said, there's mistakes are part of growth. I saw a tweet the other day. Uh, the value is in the struggle. The struggle is the value, and and so you know he's learning to to struggle and fight through it and get better. Mitch Forty Parmesan. Eli, you've got a couple defensive linemen here who uh, have some experience at the college level and Daniel Robledo and Realist George. I'm, I'm curious, what have you seen from them so far during spring and how can they help you? Well, both of them were able to earn their number uh, during uh, our, our one-on-one -on -one drill, Patriot drill. And, uh, you know, those guys are continuing to grow and learn the defense, learn the technique that Coach Franklin wants them to learn. Uh, you know, it, it – Spring's usually a struggle period for the junior college player just because of the tempo, the amount of reps, the intensity, the detail with which we, excuse me, with which we practice. Um, but if they can absorb it and then utilize the next four months to improve, they'll put themselves in a position to help us uh, in the in the fall. Blair Kerbaugh, Kansas City Star. Hey, you know, I'm just curious about the philosophy of uh, of not having the depth chart in the in the spring. What would, uh, is that something you've that you've always done or been part of a staff that's always done that? Uh, I, I just you know always compete, um, and when competitions open, you get the best out of people. And once you kind of set a depth chart, people get complacent. Well, I'm this, I'm this, and other people get uh, upset. You know, and so, so the reality of it is, no matter how good you are in spring, if you don't bring your A game in fall camp you're not going to start for us. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So I, I, I don't think there's value in setting the depth chart. Now, I mean, is there people that you know are going to be the starters? Yeah, you got a pretty good feeling. But, you know, there's four months. A lot of things can happen between now and four months uh, that can dramatically change a football team. So, uh, again, we just – we believe in competition, and it's just how it's always worked out for me. Wilson, Mark, Columbia, Missouri. Eli, you said uh, your early impressions of Mookie with how fast he was. Having had a little more time to see him and watch him play, is there anything else that uh, stands out uh, to you about him? Yeah, he's got a tremendous smile. Yeah, I love that guy's smile. He's got great energy, uh, great work ethic. His attitude is is about how do I improve? He called me after Thursday practice and was asking me what the next install was so he could get ahead. Um He's on a mission right now. 
and I appreciate that, and, and I'm on a mission with him, so I'm really excited about it. Parker, are you telling you? Coach, kind of expanding off of that, um, it, Mookie was really impressive today, but so was Jay and uh, and really the entire receiving core. Uh, what what have you seen from them in the spring? Um, I mean, we had some good plays in one on ones. I think we had three tip balls, two of them resulted in picks. So I don't know that I'm real fired up about. I think some of that. I think more I think, so more so Mookie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, everybody's got good days and bad days. That's part of the growth, uh, you know. I, we got good days and bad days. Everybody's got to keep fighting to get better. We're not quite sure where we at. I do know that our defensive backs, uh, you know, are pretty good. And so that one-on-one -on -one time that we get is really good for us to continue to grow. Um, but, you know, consistency is not really there yet, route depths and all that. But we'll get there. We'll get there. And, you know, I, I think Coach Hamden's done a nice job of challenging those guys to be more consistent in their approach and more consistent making plays for us, you know, down the field. And we saw some of that, some of that today. I thought Kiki went up in the red zone, made a nice catch, contested catch there in front of JD, which was nice. Dave Matter, close this match. Hey, Eli, forgive me if I just missed him. Is, is Travion Ford out here right now, or is he? Um... No, Travion had an injury uh, during, during training, so he's going to miss the rest of spring. Uh, we anticipate a full recovery. He should be back uh, full speed by, by the time we come back for summer school. Okay. And last, get the arm in front of the yeah, I don't think we've asked you about uh, Jadarius Perkins yet this spring and uh, kind of two parts. First of all, how far ahead of the time that everybody else knew he was here? Did you guys actually know he was coming? And and what have you seen out of him just through a handful of practices and workouts? Yeah, about two hours. We knew about two hours before y'all did that he was coming, um, which was awesome. I, J.D. Perkins, you want to talk about a young man who's got great work ethic, attention to detail, doing everything we're asking him to do, getting reps with the ones, learning a whole new defense, you know, adjusting to different things being thrown at him. Um, he's got the right stuff. He's really got the right stuff. Got great length, uh, short area quickness, ball skills. We're, we're fired up about <coughs> – excuse me. Spring day out here. <coughs> we're fired up about what he's going to bring to our defense and the way he's um, practicing, you know – just like everybody, there's good there's good plays and then there's plays that he gets to learn from. And, and that's why it's so good for him to be here this spring. I know he's really soaking up the opportunity to learn from Coach Wilkes. And, uh, you know, I thought him and uh, uh, Ennis had some really good break on the balls in the team periods and, and did a nice job. I know Ennis had a nice uh, red zone breakup and a third down breakup. So uh, those guys are continuing to improve. And, and if, you, if we can get those – all those guys that I've just mentioned – to continue to iron, sharpens iron, and, and really get better off each other. I really like the way that our secondary group is going to come together. All right, that'll do it for today. Thank you, everyone. Hey, good luck to the basketball team. MIZ.